Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this micro lecture is on wave speed equation. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow up questions on Google Forms. Okay, so last time we left off with this idea that wave speed is how fast the wave or how fast the actual disturbance is traveling. Um, in other words, how far it goes each second. Um, so that's where we left off, and I reminded you that it's the energy or disturbance that's traveling, not the, uh, the water itself, and we'll talk more about that in the next video. So normally we can calculate speed with distance traveled and time, so we just simply take distance divided by time, and that gives us speed. But what if we can't see the wave to measure its distance and time, meaning what if it's not a water wave, what if it's a light wave or a sound wave and we can't actually see it, what can we do then? Well, unit analysis will tell us that since speed is meters per second and wavelength is just in meters and hertz is an inverse second or per second, that means if we multiply those two things, we get wave speed or we get speed. So that's another way we can use to calculate it. So that brings us to this equation where wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Now this upside down Y symbol is called lambda. It's a Greek letter. It normally looks like a L type letter, uh, but this is the lowercase version of it. And like I said, it's lambda and it represents wavelength. So our wave speed here is again frequency times wavelength. Now this happens to be a linear relationship between the wave speed and its frequency, meaning if we compare that to y equals mx, that's very similar. It'll be a linear relationship. If we're looking at wave speed and wavelength, it is also a linear relationship. However, if we're looking at frequency versus wavelength, we have to move the uh, lambda to the other side. Um, so that we can compare the two. And what we see then is that we get an inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. So that means as frequency goes up, the length or size of the waves goes down. Now the last thing I want to tell you is that wave speed depends on the material wave is traveling through. So what that means is the speed of light um, is pretty fast. Uh, in fact, it's 186,000 miles per second. That means in one second, which is what all these images are about, light in a vacuum will travel 186,000 miles. Now it moves a little bit slower in water. In this case, in one second in water, it would only travel 140,000 miles. In glass, it would only travel 124,000 miles. And if you had a gigantic diamond and you allowed light to travel for one second, it could only go 77,500 miles. Um, the reason why is because whatever material a wave is traveling through determines how fast that wave can travel. So the wave speed depends on the material it's traveling through. For sound, uh, here's how it breaks down. So in air, sound travels 344 meters per second. Uh, in water, it travels 1,462 meters per second. In wood, um, it's about 3,800 meters per second. Iron, uh, about 5,100 meters per second. And in stone, 6,000 meters per second. So we can see that depending on what material the sound is traveling through, it will actually go faster or slower. And in fact, it moves pretty slow in air in comparison. That's it. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.